So today I'm going to tell you about how I put up my apron on my chicken run. I have half inch square opening hardwire cloth. The square itself is half an inch and then it's three feet from top to bottom. So it's three feet tall. And this is a hundred yard stretch of fencing. We have some very strong fencing because we have goats also. And then the posts are all put in. So all that original fencing is done and I'm just adding the apron because it protects from predators getting underneath the fence like skunks or rats. I guess they could crawl through the hole, but dogs especially. Dogs kill a lot of chickens. So um, to prevent the digging animals from being able to get in because right now they can dig and squeeze right under the fence and get in and kill everything. So with this, what happens is the dog or coyote or whatever um, that can't jump as high. This is, I believe, five foot fencing, but um, up to the top of this one. They, what the digging animal will do is come right to the edge of the fence and they will start to dig, but they'll hit wire and they don't know to back it up and dig back here. So they go right against the fence and dig. So this prevents them from being able to dig under the fence. So what I've done so far is taken my 100 foot roll and I just rolled it down the hill. And then what I've been doing is lifting it up to the height that I want, which I try to do about halfway. So about a foot and a half from the top to where it will be pressed against the fence. And then this lower half is about a foot and a half also. And then once you kind of get it rolled out, um, what I'm doing right now is pushing it up against the fence and then I'm taking the hog rings. So this is the other things that you'll need. You'll need wire cutters and then hog rings, which are these guys. You can buy them on Amazon. Probably hardware stores may carry them if they're a small hardware store. They're called hog rings. And then this is a hog ring plier, and this is a hog ring here. So I'll show you how you load it up. So there is the plier. I don't have any way to hold the camera to show you. It just opens and then you set it in there. And the, the plier wants to close itself. So it just holds it in there. Like I can set it down and it's gonna, it holds it. It's not gonna fall out real easy. And then, what you do is you just press the wire up against your fencing and then you squeeze and it latches the two together. And I'm gonna do that along the top of my apron fencing all the way down. And I'm gonna try to get it about even where I want it along this as I go. See some of the places are higher, but you also have hills and different things. So it's not gonna be perfect. At least I don't care if it is, but if you want it perfect, measure it or figure it out. So I'm going to go all the way down and I'll be stretching the wire flat and I'm going to go all the way along the top. And then what I'm going to do is probably work from that way back up and I'm going to be pressing this lower part against the fencing and clamping them together because that's going to make a real tight fence to fence. It's not going to be gaping like this. And then... Um, the bottom will be a sharper L shape. It's not going to be all U'd out like that. And then over time, some people bury it, and I've done that before. Like if there's gaping areas or undulations, I'll add some dirt and sawdust and different stuff. But otherwise, um, as long as it's pretty flat against the ground, your grass is going to grow up in between it, and then you just mow right over the top of it. We haven't had any trouble doing that. Um, I'll show you our finished one that's been completed for about a year because we just added on from here over. This is all the new run that I'm going to be doing today. And there's another 50 by 100 square over there that we did last year. So I'll show you that. So here's the one from last year. Um, I could probably go in and put a couple more hog rings like here where it's kind of bubbling. But for the most part, as you can see, it's tight against the fencing. So it's just right along there. And then you can't even see the wire that's on the ground. Um, it's all gotten overgrown, which is good because that makes it even harder to dig. And I just mowed right over it today, um, prepping 
prepping to do the new run. Um, so this is this is what that looks like. You can just mull right over it. You can wee wap against it if you want. Um, but that's how it looks when it's done. You can't even see it under the ground and it's right tight against the fence. So that was the overview and kind of what we're shooting to do here. If you want to watch the rest of the video, I'll kind of show you a little bit more the process of it. So right now I've gotten about a fourth of the way, maybe about half, um, with that top ring put in place just to kind of hold the fence. And now what I'm going to do is go down here, pull it straight so I get rid of all these waves and just continue on. I'm at the other end, you can see how as I've gone along it's gotten real wavy. So I'm just going to pull that straight by grabbing this roll and pulling it until it all kind of lays flat. And I can't show you that because I only have two hands. So I've pulled it straight and now what I'm going to do is go back up to work where I left off so I don't create any waves by starting it this end and working this way. You'll just get waves in the middle because it won't be pulled tight. So I'm going to go back up here where I was working and then just kind of keep pulling it tight and clipping the top as I work my way this way. So I left off here and I'll try to show you kind of what I do. Um, I know it's trying to go, I'm trying to hit about here where the top of the fence should be. And so as I go along, I just kind of um, pull it up and I'll use my foot to kind of push it in where it needs to go. And then that's right where it is and it's pretty tight to the bottom. Um, and I'll just keep clipping along and doing that all the way down till I reach the bottom. In regards to how far apart I put the hog rings, I don't really have an exact answer. So I have one here and then I have one here. Um, whatever feels comfortable. Um, if I have a, a place that wants to poke out, like over here, I would just clip a couple more on as I, so like right there, I'll probably clip extra right there when I go back and keep clipping from the top down. And I don't kind of do them, I definitely won't stack them, like here's one, I wouldn't do one here. I would try to spread them out, like put one here, one over here, you know, one there, one down there as low as you can, and just kind of spread them out. And they do hold very well. At least the ones I have, I'm not sure my package is worn out, you know, what kind of thickness or whatever it has, but these hold very strong, so um, a little goes a long way with them. I just want to say too, as far as effectiveness goes, against dogs, I think it works pretty well because we had two loose huskies running this area. We had a lot of stray dogs, and they were not able to breach um, the chicken area so it was effective against two roaming huskies so I made it almost all the way to the bottom and I ran out of my hog rings so we're starting back up at the top um, and then I have so like we said the top is done and so now I'm just gonna go through and um, connect it lower and lower and as low as I can to the ground to make it very very tight to the other fencing this is just one way to do it, um, depending on what you have for your original fencing. You know, you can figure out other things. I needed to attach fence to fence. And I'll even go through and on the wood posts, I'll add um, staples that I would hammer in um, for security at the top and the bottom. And um, you can even wire them to the poles if you want. So that's one way to do an apron and I'll show you as we go along. It really helps if you have a really great helper to hand you the hog rings. Thank you. So I've added one here just to kind of show you. One's there and there. And along the bottom I added um, a bit more close closer to each other because there's pressure down there kind of pulling upward. And so this is kind of how it's looking tight against the fence and then kind of use a little bit at the bottom and then it will lay flat out here and if parts of it kind of bow up at the end I'll kind of mess around with pressing it flat and like I said sometimes I'll lay rocks on it or you can lay piles of dirt you know to kind of seed that so it's fresh grass 
or sawdust. I'll a lot of times empty the coop and just throw the sawdust on here um, to kind of help it compress into the grass. So we'll just keep going. The fence has been tightened all the way to the bottom. And I was just gonna show how I do the ends. So this was one solid three foot section and I use my cutting tool and I cut so that this part could rest on the ground and then this up to this post and then I'm gonna just wrap this wire. So then there's gonna be some fencing that's out here to protect from anyone who would dig in from the corner. So that's how I would finish each section. So now I'm at the other end and I've left about, I don't know, a foot and a half probably. And then I'm just finishing up cutting here um, all the way to the end, just getting rid of all this extra roll that I had that we don't need on there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing where I cut it to wrap around. For the gate area, all I did was take and cut the wire straight down to where the rest of that could fold in to the gate. And then I clamped it along there. And then as you can see, it goes straight under. Same thing over here. I ran it a little past the, the wood here and then the rest of it went straight in. And then the wood, um, I set on top. It's set on top of the wire. And we're gonna do a little modifying here. So um, you want it to be, the wood to be flush up against the gate here so nothing can get in and under. Um, and then we're gonna screw it in to the side wood here. And then the same, see how it kind of drops away over here though? So I'll be building up dirt um, underneath to make this piece of wood come up flush with the gate so nothing can just hop right in there because that kind of defeats the purpose of letting the skunk just run right in. So that's what we'll be doing so that it's even like it is over here and blocks that hole really, really well. The last thing is how the corners meet up. So if you remember, this section over here was laid out flat and then I'd cut it so that it, it could wrap the upper part over this way and then I did the same thing with this run ran it all the way down had it meet and then I just cut you know cut here and then I wrapped that upper part over there and then on this part that's overlapping I put a few of the hogs rings to keep them um, together and then this corner kind of sticks up so what I'm going to be doing is when I go to clean out my chicken coop I'll lay um, I'll get some dirt and I'll lay some dirt on the end here and then some of the sawdust and then I have some old hay that will kind of, because, because it just sticks up quite quite a bit. So just to, that's how you take care of those edges that stick up. Or you can buy stakes, um, like tent stakes kind of deal or yard stakes that are U-shaped and stake it down too. That's another way to do it. So this is the almost completed apron minus just fixing on the gate section and then um, the parts that are wobbly sticking.